Leslie's in Barron Springs, Michigan. Hi, Leslie. Hello, Leo. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, too. Thank you so much for taking my call. My great pleasure. What can I do for you today? All right. This is uh, something that I've been struggling with to figure out for the last few months. But I started a website um, a little over a year ago where I teach biology. Oh, and that's... Wait a minute. Let me just say, thank you. That's great. Well, I, thank you. I love that. You, you, it reminds me of Khan Academy. You know, I'm sure you know about that, which is a great site where you can learn anything. Exactly. And it's very similar to that. Um, but okay, now you've got to tell me. We've got to give you the plug. What's the name of the site? It's Interactive Biology. If you search for it in Google, it'll come up. Or you type interactive-biology.com. This is such a... I, I, you know, this is what the, the promise of the web is, if you ask me, is people like you who just are giving... Now, do you, do you charge for this or... I do not. I can't believe it. Now, you're such a nice guy, Leslie. Why do you do that? I'll tell you exactly why I do it. When I first started it, my goal was to put a lot of videos out there. I have about 100 videos on there so now. Cool. And then eventually my goal was to pull it behind doors and start charging for it. But then I, I mean, since January, I've gotten like over 500 emails and messages from people in third world countries and all over the place telling me how much it's helping them. And when I saw that, I thought to myself, "No, I can't. I can't pull this behind closed doors and charge for it. I need to. I need to leave it out there for free." We got to make you some money, though. How are we going to make you? You put. I could tell you put a ton of work into these videos. Well, and that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about because um, I, I set it up and I put a lot into it. But now I'm trying to grow it and expand it, and there's a lot of traffic. So yeah, it, it's starting to cost you money. It is definitely costing me money. I've yeah. had to hire help and so on. So I'm trying to figure out how do. You, oh wow! My, okay, I'm trying to figure out. Are how you getting a little traffic on your server? <laughs> I think we just killed your site. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, probably just a million people just went to your site. I totally apologize. <laughs> You'll get it back. You know, uh, just so people understand, this happens all the time because when, when, uh, when you design a site, when you buy bandwidth for a site, you don't buy bandwidth for the peaks. You buy bandwidth, you know, because if you, if you bought enough bandwidth for 100,000 people all the time, it'd be prohibitively expensive. So it's, yeah. po you know, almost any site you can bring down just by hitting it with, uh, you know, a few thousand people because you just don't design it for that. You don't buy that kind of bandwidth. So it'll come back. It'll come back. I have a pretty, I have a pretty um, good um, virtual private server, so I, I'm surprised it went down that easy. Well, you understand that there's a million people listening, and even if only 1% just went to your site, we're going to crash it. Uh, I see. Okay. <laughs> well, good to know. Yeah. But anyway, I do want to, first of all, you've done this beautifully. I mean, it is, it is a gorgeous site. I love your interactivity that you've built into it. You've got YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. You've got chat. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, you're really encouraging uh, social sharing of this with a tweet and a like button. I guess that's Wibia that's providing that uh, toolbar at the bottom. I think that's great. Yeah. I, I, that's a really, really good idea. Well, well thank you. Um, but this is, this is my, main issue, my main question because I've been hearing you, only you basically, talk a lot about um, Creative Commons. And I've been trying to figure out whether I should go in that direction. But still, I need to make sure that it's something that I can sustain, that can make so, them. So, exactly. So here's the, here, here's the issue. You know, um, the way radio works, the way I've worked my whole life is with something called free media that's advertising supported. So you really, there's only a few ways that you can make great content like this and sustain it. Unless you are a uh, independently wealthy millionaire who just wants to do it out of the goodness of your heart. Or you can find, and, and this isn't actually isn't a bad idea, you can find somebody like, um, I don't know, uh, the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, which does, does a lot of support for scientific education. Okay. If you could go to the Sloan Foundation and said, hey, I, you know, give me 100000 a year and you'll be paying for this site. And frankly, this is exactly, I think, the kind of thing they should be funding. So that's another way to do it. Go to somebody with deep pockets and say, fund it. But other than that, you got three ways to make a site work. You could put up a paywall, which you were thinking of doing, and I think wisely. I, mean, to I, really, I 
can't I can't do that. I agree. I, you decided not to do that, and I think that's wise. And one of the problems with the paywall, one of the reasons I don't use a paywall is not only does it lock out people who can't afford it, you have to become an enforcer. Yeah. A paywall only works if you want to police it. Who wants to do that? Yeah. You don't want to put yourself in the position of spending half your time looking for people stealing your content or rebroadcasting it. And it's the only way you can make a paywall work. So okay. there are three ways, as I said. Paywall is one. Ad-supported free media is another. Donations is a third. You can ask, and I, I do the latter two on our Twit okay. podcast site. We both ask for donations. Uh, and I think a site like, like yours, uh, you probably get a lot of grateful students and their parents, even more importantly, who would donate money to this site. Uh, so that's one possibility. You absolutely are missing the boat by not saying, do you like this site? Help us keep it online. And, so and, I, and I do do that in some places. I mean, I, I, I have the videos there via YouTube, but I also have a download page if you up, um, if you. I would go um, to it, but I don't think, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work yet. <laughs> I know. Basically, you opt in, you get download, you get to go, download yeah, all the yeah, videos. Yeah, we crashed it. That was a bunch of resources, and on that, I asked people to donate if they want. And I've done that, but not much has come in. Oh, yeah, and this is the other thing I learned is a very small percentage of people. Now, I don't think that my podcasts have the kind of goodwill that yours would. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you, should, you, you could even say, if you get an A, give me $10. If you get a B, give me $7. If you get a C, give me $3. If you get a D, you don't have to give me anything. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can make it fun. The We... Ended up, uh, we asked people to donate. We still ask people to donate $2 a month. Uh, it's not required. There's no no necessity to do that, just out of the goodness of their heart. And about, I would say, uh, we make about uh, between eight and $10,000 a month in donations. That means it's four or 5,000 people, which is one one-hundredth, one percent of the total donate. Uh, and that's pretty, t I would say that's pretty typical. You know, uh, public broadcasting claims a 4% donor rate. But, of course, they're begging all the time. Um, so I would say that's the max you could ever expect is a 4% donor rate. So you can do the math. Okay. So that really means that, you, you know, you're either going to have to take advertising. And I'll tell you what, on a site like this that is going to schools, that could be a problem. S you know, schools sometimes do not uh, – will, will block a site like that or won't let that participate. So I certainly would set up the tip jar. Okay. I have one more question. Yeah, hang on, because I really want to support you in this. We do have to take a break. Okay. Really, really cool. Uh, we'll talk some more about it in just a bit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. And they stay there. They stay All right, Leo, you got a DSL Extreme billboard here. This is a song Zuckerberg came out to. For really? Yeah. And both, both him and uh, Adam Sandler. Ludacris going in on the verse because I never been. Mmm, Ludacris. I'll tell you why we played that song. Kyle explain it to me in a second. When hands go up. That was the song that I didn't know this, but Kyle Benham tells me that was the song that Mark Zuckerberg came out to at his F8 keynote, which was on Thursday, and that's where Facebook announced all those new changes. It was kind of fun. They had Andy Samberg come out first. You remember Andy had played uh, Mark Zuckerberg on Saturday Night Live. Does a credible Mark Zuckerberg. Not as good as Jesse Eisenberg, but credible Mark Zuckerberg. And so he came out and said, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> or the Zuck Beast or whatever. He, Zuck Man. And it was, it was pretty funny, I have to say. Uh, what I liked about it was it was a little bit self-deprecating. It kind of mocked uh, Facebook and mocked himself, and I think that that's probably a good idea when you're building a company that terrifies people. It's good to be a little bit self-deprecating. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the number of Kyle's, uh, our musical director, Kyle Benham's playlist will appear on the show notes, techguylabs.com. At the end of the show, he also posts it on Google Plus as a Spotify playlist, which means you could just click it, click that link, and listen to every song in its entirety which is awesome. 8888 Ask Leo. We were talking to Leslie. I just think this is so cool what Leslie's doing. Of course, we immediately brought down his website. I, I just got it upgraded. <laughs> so well, don't spend a lot of money on that. Now, see, now I'm going to feel bad. 
Well, no, just temporarily. They they just added some more resources. Some bandwidth. So tell us the link again. Let's see if we can bring it back down. <laughs> and- Biology.com. So the easiest way to do it, and this is the way I did it, is search for interactive biology on Google. And you don't have to yeah. do any typing. And uh, the very first result on Google says interactive biology by Leslie Samuel, making biology fun. Uh, and what a great idea. You put up together a bunch of videos and we broke it again. And- <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Leslie. <laughs> oh, my word. That's I'm so sorry. But It'll be back up. Make yeah, and make a note, uh, folks. Is it what what age group is it aged at, aimed at? High school or college? Well, I have some. I have I have an entire um, year biology class on there for high school. But then I also the videos that I make on a regular basis are mostly for college, university, even medical school. I get doctors using it and pharmacists, and I mean it's it's helping people at all the different levels, pretty much. I think. I mean, I cannot thank you. Are are you a biology teacher? What's your background? Well, it's it's actually quite interesting. I was teaching high school biology, and because of this website, um, I got a job now. I'm a professor, at, an assistant professor at a university, teaching in a physical therapy program. Well, you got some benefit then. That's good. Oh, most definitely. So this is something very important to point out. I think it's in the Bible. Cast your bread upon the water, and it will come back to you a thousandfold. I think that people sometimes hold on so tight to their creations. It's mine, I made it, and I want to make money for it. And I, I tell photographers, I tell writers, I tell bloggers, I tell video artists, I tell podcasters, you know, sometimes it's it's good for the soul, and you might even get a benefit by just giving it away. Exactly. So, so my question, uh, my second question with the Creative Commons, let's say I were to do that, and I put it as Creative Commons, but later on the line I see that, okay, maybe this isn't working as well as I thought, and I would... Like, you can change I, the license at any time. Oh, you can? Yeah. Okay. So let me explain what this is for people who are saying, what is he talking about? Uh, you know, there is a copyright law in the U.S. that uh, describes how ownership of intellectual property, your creations, writing, music, video, are protected. And it's automatic. It is an automatic license. Merely by creating something, you assert copyright to it. Now, there's things you can do in addition. You can file with the with the government and say, I own this copyright. You can, if you wish, and you don't have to file to do this, you can also put, and I'm not a lawyer, but this is my understanding of it, you can also put a copyright logo on your stuff, copyright 2011, uh, Leslie Samuel, all rights reserved. And merely putting that notice on there set, set, sends a notice that this is my stuff. You may not use it without my permission. You may not republish it. You may not copy it. You may not use it in a school. You may not use it in any way without my permission. That's the default. There really isn't any or wasn't for a long time any other choice. You could either do that or 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 say, I don't assert any rights. And you'd have to do this actively because the copyright is, is automatic. And this is in the U.S. It's different around the world. But in the U.S., you could also say, nope, I put it in the public domain. I assert no rights. But at that point, you have no control, and anybody can do anything, including putting it on a DVD and charging for it. So Larry Lessig, who is a brilliant, uh, was at Harvard, Stanford, uh, law professor, a great thinker, a deep thinker, written a number of books. Larry said there's got to be, we need, a, we need a license somewhere in between asserting all rights and no rights. Some legal license that somebody could assert saying, look, here's... Here's w- what I want you to do with my stuff. And he created something called Creative Commons. If you Google Creative Commons, you can go to their website and find out more. The Creative Commons licenses, there are a variety of them. There isn't just one that cover, you know, common uh, alternative uses. Creativecommons.org is the website. And uh, you can actually go there and click a button that says choose a license and go through the steps and create a license. Your choices include... Will you allow commercial use of your work? Yes or no? Will you allow modifications of your work? Yes, no, or this very interesting middle ground where, yes, you can modify it, but you have to share your modification as I have shared my original work. And then you can say, what is the jurisdiction of your license? And you could say international, U.S., whatever countries. I would just choose international. There's additional fields that you can fill out, but that those those two questions 
are the fundamental questions. Now, for instance, except for this radio show, which is owned by the Premier Radio Networks, and they have the copyright for this and assert all rights to it, every other podcast I do, all the website blogs I do, all the videos I make, I license Creative Commons, non-commercial, that means you can't take it and sell it without okay. my permission, and I say attribution, which means you have to give me credit if you reuse it, and share alike, which means, yes, you can mess with it. You can do a mix, a mashup. You can take parts of it and put it, but you have to do the, whatever you create that way. You have to share the same way that I've shared this. You have to pass it, pay it forward, pass it along. So that's the license I use. What, okay. it's, what it's saying is I still assert rights to this. I'm not. You can't do anything you want, and I think you would want to do this. Uh, you can revoke it. You can just, you know, change the license agreement on there. But but remember that once you've said it's Creative Commons, people in their minds might think so. And, uh, you know, it may take a while for people to realize, hey, he's no longer Creative Commons. So I would think hard about this before you do it. Um, yeah, and, I, and, I, and I don't know that I would want to remove it from Creative Commons. I want people to be able to share it as much as possible. If it's not helping people, then it doesn't make any sense putting it up out exactly. there. Exactly. And you use it as much as you can to to learn biology exactly. better and so on. Furthermore, um, once you put something on the web, it's kind of that way by default, right? It kind of, it kind of. I mean, you're putting it out there, and even if you assert a copyright, you've seen how hard it is for copyright holders to preserve their copyright. Yeah. You know they have to police it. They have to they have to pull down stuff off YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is in fact a big battle going on. I think you're what you're doing is is fundamentally altruistic. I think you deserve to at least cover your costs, if not make money. You know you should make money on this. So you need to find a way to do that. I think donations are the best route. I would also though go to the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation and say, look, I'm doing education in sciences. This is what you, your foundation was set up to fund. Fund me. You know, you probably know a little bit about grant writing. If you work in the sciences, you kind of have to learn. Uh, I, would, I would look for grants. But I think what you're doing is so fantastic. Just keep it up, Leslie. I think you're doing a great, great thing. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for the call. Interactive-biology.com. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.